morning students this is uh, 2022 je mains uh, first shift phase 1 on the morning shift of uh, 24th june this is chemistry by mohammad ashraf so this paper is purely based on the memory of the students so hope the questions are correct so i am continuing this paper so the first question the total number of lone pairs in the melamine question was the total number of lone pairs that was there in the melamine so we need to know the structure of melamine which is a heterocyclic aromatic compound this is the structure of melamine we have got six nitrogen and on each nitrogen we found a lone pair so the total number of lone pairs that are present in the molecule of melamine is six and hence option a is correct let's go to next question this is marshall's acid the number of pi bonds the present in marshall's acid marshall's acid is h2 h2 o8 or oxidized sulfuric acid which structure whose structure is like this oh s double bond o double bond o and there was a peroxy bond with the sulfur again having pi bonds like this so if you notice we'll be having one two three and four pi bonds so the number of pi bonds present in marshall acid is four and the answer is four so that's why option four is correct next question which of these is not a broad spectrum antibiotic broad spectrum antibiotic the question related to antibiotics in chemistry every day life before and here the answer is a penicillin penicillin is actually a narrow spectrum it's a narrow spectrum antibiotic whereas all others are broad spectrum so that's why penicillin is odd and out and hence penicillin is answer but not a broad spectrum because it is a narrow spectrum the direct question number a based then let's go to next question there are statements here emulsion of water and oil is unstable and separates into two layers given is emulsion of water and oil is unstable and separates into two layers statement 2 was given it is stabilized by adding excess of electrolyte we don't add excess we do add an electrolyte called as emulsifying agent but we don't add excess so the option b is correct answer is b after the emulsion question let us go to next question this is a question related to equilibrium okay. an equilibrium is given here a gives rise to b plus half c it is a homogeneous equilibrium and all the components of reactants and products are in gaseous state so for this equilibrium find the relationship between equilibrium constant k degree of dissociation alpha and equilibrium pressure so here a was in equilibrium with b and half c all are in gaseous state so initially a moles 0 0 at equilibrium a into 1 minus alpha a alpha and a alpha by 2 so the total number of moles now becomes a into 1 plus alpha by 2 so by adding Because there will be the equilibrium pressure now. So now we need question number five. Here uh, an equilibrium is given where A was in equilibrium with uh, B and half mole of C. In this equilibrium, all the reactants and products are in gaseous state. So we need to find out the relation between dissociation constant. Pressure. So let's take initially a moles, zero moles, and zero moles 
initially but at equilibrium it is a into 1 minus alpha a alpha and this is a alpha by 2 so the total number of holes will become a into 1 plus alpha by 2 is the total number of holes at equilibrium this is n total now we need to find out the partial pressure of a the partial pressure of component a is 1 minus alpha by 1 plus alpha by 2 into p and the partial pair of b is alpha by 1 plus alpha by 2 into p and that of c is alpha by 2 into 1 plus alpha by 2 into p and we need to find out the equilibrium constant kp so kp is equal to partial pair of b into partial pair of c power half by partial pair of a so if you substitute this we may get an expression that is kp is equal to alpha by 2 into 1 plus alpha by 2 into p power half into alpha by 1 plus alpha by 2 into p divided by 1 minus alpha by 1 plus alpha by 2 into p and on solving you get alpha power 3 by 2 into p power 1 by 2 divided by 2 plus alpha power half so if you look at the options if you look at the options you found this is option a which is alpha power 3 by 2 and p power 1 by 2 by 2 plus alpha power 1 by 2 so hence option a is Let's go to the next question. The molecule which has minimum role in chemical smog, chemical smog, environmental chemistry question. So chemical smog mainly consists of uh, ozone, nitric oxide, um, PAN. These are the important. Uh, uh, main constituents of photochemical smog and nothing to do with nitrogen. Nitrogen has nothing to do with the photochemical smog. It is stable and inert. So formaldehyde is there, NO is there and ozone, all the three are related to photochemical smog but not in hand. The molecule which has minimum role in photochemical smog is obviously nitrogen and hence it is option B, direct question, memory weight. The difference between oxidation number of chromium in dichromate and uh, chromate ion. So dichromate Cr2O7 minus 2 and chromate is CrO4 minus 2. So you know, students, it is there in NCR book, dichromate is an orange color compound and chromate is an yellow color compound. And there was an equilibrium uh, with this. So, maintaining pH value more than 7, dichromate converts to chromate and pH is less than 7, chromate converts to dichromate. That's okay. But consider the oxidation number in dichromate, oxidation state of chromium plus 6. And chromate also, it is plus 6 and you can get it by calculating the oxidation number simply by using the rules. So, in both the cases, the oxidation state and number of the chromium is being same and hence the difference is zero so option a zero is correct well let's go to next question it's an organic question biomolecules carbohydrates so galactose is which epimer of glucose you need to know the structure of glucose so if you look at glucose is to OH, OH, and OH. So, these galactose is third and fourth is the So, that's why this is CHO. And it was CH2OH. So OH here, 
it's here oh it's here and oh it's here so c4 epimer so galactose is a c4 epimer of glucose by knowing the structure of galactose you can tell it is a c4 epimer all the structures are there in ncrt and uh, one should know the structure of galactose to answer this question let's go to next question which of the following is stable nitrogen halide so it is a very direct question friends um, ncl3 nbr3 ni3 are very unstable at room temperature explosives whereas ns3 is a stable at room temperature so direct question ns3 is a stable the stablest halide is nitrogen trifluoride and remaining halides of nitrogen are very very unstable so answer is a option a is correct answer so which of the following is the correct statement the statement related to diborane boron family we all know diborane is electron deficient species and as we said it is obviously true state you know the structure of diborane is this this is diborane and if you observe uh, these two are actually called as banana bonds we are like above and below the plane so the terminal hydrogens and the two borons they lie in one plane whereas and this these two are lying above and below the plane and so b2h6 is a lewis acid true all the bh bonds in diborane are equal it is obviously false because this bond length and this bond length varies so terminal hydrogens and bridged hydrogens bonding differ so that's why this is a wrong statement b2h6 has a planar structure it is also false because all the atoms are not lying in the same plane these two hydrogens one lie above and one lie below so that is the false statement maximum number of hydrogen in one plane is six it is also false because it is six it is four this this and this and this these are the four hydrogens which are lying in the plane so finally option a is correct and remaining options are false and the answer is option a so let's go to the next question so matching question related to metallurgy four names and their formula are given so students uh, this is a direct question calamine calamine is zinc carbonate galena is pbs sphalerite is zns and the siderite is FeCO3. So, uh, pyrite is ZnS and siderite is FeCO3. So, Dr. So, calamine, zn, zinc carbonate, galena, PVS, pyrite, ZnS and siderite FeCO3. And hence, answer is secret. So, A Q B P C is s c is s a q b c c s actually c s and d is r this is correct answer option c is correct now let's go to next question structure of uh, cobalt carbonyl the so co2 co8 x is the number of co co bonds and y is the number of cobalt carbon monoxide terminals so terminals so one should know the structure of this so this is cobalt this is cobalt this is co co bond and uh, this is co also co ligands bridge ligands and the remaining are co CO, CO, monodentate ligands. Here are 
more intelligent so finally yet the this is a evil one and root is a perfect evil so y equal to 6 finally value is 7 so x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 6 that's why the sum is 7 and hence the option d is the correct answer 7 is the correct answer now next question which is a conjugated diode conjugated diode look at this this is a ketone and it is a ketone and it has got a conjugation so this is a conjugated diode this is a diode but doesn't have conjugation so this is wrong answer whereas this is not having any kind of conjugation and it's a simple diode similarly it is an aldehyde it's a ketone so this is not a diode this is diode but i'm having conjugation so finally the answer is the quinone this is quinone and it is a conjugated diode so option a is correct answer let's go to next question so as a organic question iupac name was given so comma 7 diphenyl or di let's process so like Now we look at the name two comma seven dimethyl. This is two comma seven dimethyl, and it is two comma six octadiene. So this is two comma six octadiene. So this compound is given, and this is treated with a mineral acid, and it is heated. So when you write heat, means clearly it indicates elimination. So the very first step is the attack of the proton electrophilic part of the alkene being a symmetrical you can add this h plus it's any double bond both the nucleophilic sets are equivalent so you are going to add this plus here so you are going to carbocation table carbocation here so finally you will be getting like this 1 2 3 4 5 7 and 8 and you are getting this carbocation distribution now intramolecular intramolecular electrophilic addition whereas the nucleophile is there here only and the electrophile is also within so the bond get polarized to get del negative the del positive this means here at position 7 so finally you will be getting a six numbering like having a positive charge which is a secondary carbocation so this undergoes 1 comma 2 methyl shift to produce a stable carbocation compared to the previous so after 1 comma 2 methyl shift here will get a carbocation which is a 3 degree shift and then delta means heat elimination so on the elimination is law of hydrogen is a stable product as alkene and instead of alkene so if you observe carefully in this stable product you found these two alkenes are because are sp2 hydrogen two cross alkene so So, in the polyester polymer, dacron. So, if you look at the monomeric part of dacron, the monomer is a copolymer with a terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. Terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol uh, condense to give this structure. which is having a functional group of polyester so this is probably 
the structure of polyester dacron which is having the ester functional group look at this functional group students this is ester and this unit repeats and hence it is a polyester coming to polyethyl is was an addition polymer teflon and in dna it is polying amide it's a peptide and it is amide it's not ester so that's why option b c d can't be answered so option a is the choice so i gave the right answer the option is that then let's uh, which of the following have the maximum melting point so melting point acetic acid formic acid propanoic acid and butanoic acid so is acid ch3 coh for this maximum melting point here and coming to formic acid uh, molly weight is less so acetic acid being there and the highest melting of next which are which are important in the so have a process h2 plus n2 use ammonia half h2 plus 3 by 2 n2 use ammonia so uh, hydrogen is in the position of ammonia by process all ammonia is option left here so hence the answer is b for this question is a direct question then you can find the source of ammonia now x is hcp and y occupies x x occupies x occupies the lattice points of hcp so lattice points of hcp means the number of particles per unit cell is 6 so it is hcp can have structure like this so here the particles present at a corners and also present on a phase center and there are three particles inside so finally the effective number of particles that present per unit cell of hcp was 6 and y occupies 2 by 3 to 3 of a, a tetrahedral void so when there are six effective particles in unit cell the number of tetrahedral voids are 12 double the number 12 tetrahedral voids you found so Two third of that twelve. So this is two into four is equal to eight. So x six and y eight. So the percent age of x in the lattice. So x are six particles and total are four particles. So the percent age of x means six by fourteen into hundred. You get forty two point eight five percent. So that's why the answer is forty two point eight five percent. So this is the answer for this question. Question related to solid states. 